The Panasonic GH5 has a completely overhauled autofocus system that gives you tremendous customization and it also allows you for photography to store up to four different presets of how you want the camera to behave. Go into the camera's menu and we want to be on the top tab and we want to make sure we're on either the PAS or M mode, basically one of the photography modes. Once we're here, you'll see this setting that says AF custom settings, but only if I'm in the autofocus continuous mode. If I'm in autofocus single, it gets grayed out. Autofocus continuous gives us four different presets. Now it's important to understand you have three adjustments you can make and the adjustments are exactly the same from preset one through preset four. So if I were to set the values the same on setting one, two, three, or four, the behavior would be identical. So we just have our engineers pre-program these so that you can see we've changed the values from set one to set two, from set two to set three, from set three to set four. And these are the customizations they feel are best for how the camera will behave in given applications. We're going to reset set one and we're going to tune it ourselves and we're going to do some testing with it. We're going to test each individual setting and see how it impacts our photos. So we're going to set everything to zero with the exception of AF sensitivity. So AF sensitivity is going to depend on how fast the subject's moving toward the camera. If the subject's moving quickly toward camera, I want to set this to responsive. If the subject's moving slowly toward camera, I'd want to go to locked on. So we're going to set it to locked on where it's going to be slower to focus. We're going to have our model Emily start moving to camera here in a minute and we're going to have her move quickly so we're off sync from where we should be. So Emily come on forward. Okay. And you can go ahead and get back onto your mark at the set. And what we'll notice is that there's definitely a few missed photos here as we were tracking her. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back in. We're going to change AF sensitivity now to plus two. We're going to take our moving object predictability. We want to be at zero for this just to make sure we're, oh, we'll keep it at plus one. That's where we were set before. And what we're going to do is we're going to have her come forward again and we'll see if it tracks better. Come on through. And I don't think we missed a single shot. So you can see by making that adjustment for a moving forward subject, we're definitely getting better autofocus tracking. So now we'll have Emily go back on set. We're going to leave our AF sensitivity at plus two for this next testing because we're going to have her move in a zigzag pattern or an X, Y axis and see how well it tracks her or how poorly it tracks her. So when we go down to negative two for locked on, what it's going to assume is that Emily's going to move in a straight pattern to us and that there's nothing that's going to get in the way potentially. We're going to have her move in a zigzag even though this is the setting I'd use for moving straight forward and you'll see it'll have some trouble tracking her. So we hit set. I'm going to go back just one more time make sure our settings are the same. And Emily's just going to move in a zigzag, and we'll do it quickly. And we're missing some shots. Definitely missed one there. Definitely missed one there. So the predictability was not set correctly. So we'll have Emily go back on set. We're now going to move the AF switching speed back to plus two, hit set, and we'll have Emily go zigzag again. And we got a much higher hit ratio when we did the zigzag. Now the last setting has to do with moving object predictability. So we'll have Emily go back on set. We'll have her move a little closer to us, maybe cut the distance from the back of the set to the front, a little bit closer. So if I was doing just a portrait of somebody, and I wanted very consistent autofocus, knowing they're not gonna move very often, 
I would set the predictability to constant. This is going to be the slowest movement change for the subject. If I move this all the way up to variable, what will happen is even if there's minor movements that are very quick, if Emily were to be moving forward and backward, and I was using a shallower depth of field lens, the camera would constantly be tracking those minor movements while we're taking our picture. And that's an explanation of how our new autofocus system works.